Here we go. All right. It says, I have, I've seen a video of a woman who is talking about the Trinity, claiming she is Christian and saying that she is not following the Trinity and that the only God is the Father. The only God is the Father. Let me say this to start with. Anyone who claims to be a Christian and does not uh, believe in the doctrine of the Trinity, then they are not Christians. Anyone who claims to be a Christian and do not believe in the Trinity or the Holy Trinity or the Triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, if they do not believe in the Holy Trinity, then they are not Christians according to Christ himself. They're not Christians. So if this person is claiming to be a Christian, my advice to you, do not listen to this person, period. I don't care. They may be nice. They may be good in certain areas. This is where the enemy uses it very powerfully. And through a nice message, he will put in the poison in the midst of that message. Be very careful. So my advice to you, don't ever listen to this person. And we need to pray for this person to come to this truth and realization without believing in the Holy Trinity, you are not a Christian period. Now let me tell you, my dear friend, and to this woman who claims to be a Christian, I just want to know what would she say to Matthew 28 verse 19. According to the gospel, according to St. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, it says, the Lord Jesus is talking here. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you're saying you're a Christian and you believe it is only God the Father? Are you saying that Jesus Christ is not telling the truth? Go to all the nations baptizing them in the name, singular, format. He didn't say in the names, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Isn't this as clear as the sun that rises every day telling us that there is Holy Trinity? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So what are you getting this false doctrine and false teaching that God is only the Father? The Lord says, in the name, one name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. That's to start with. She said that in one of her arguments, that when we follow the Trinity, we must believe that the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are all ranked the same because they are all God. But then she argues, for example, in John 14, 28. Now I'll, I'll read John 14, 28, where the Lord Jesus says, You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So this woman is taking John 14, 8 and saying, you see, Jesus Christ is not God because he's saying my father is greater than I. So if we are going to believe in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all equal. Well, there is no equality here because Jesus is saying my father is greater than I. Looks like this woman has no idea what the Holy Bible is all about. She needs to learn a lot about theology. She needs to learn a lot. My goodness. It's very dangerous nowadays. Everybody's a teacher. It's always good to be a, a student, a disciple. Don't be a teacher. Let Christ teach you. Humble yourself. And, and she says that if all three are equal, one cannot be greater than the other one. My father is greater than I. 
Well, if the Lord Jesus here says, my father is greater than I, we need to understand who is talking here. See, what this woman is missing totally is that when you talk about Christ, you are saying Christ is perfect God and perfect man at the same time. Looks like she has forgotten the humanity of Christ. She has forgotten the humanity of Christ. So Christ is perfect God and perfect man at the same time. There are certain things Christ shows that he is doing him as the man. And there are certain things he is doing him as God himself. Example, example, example. The Lord Jesus saw Jerusalem and cried for Jerusalem. Who cries? The Son of Man. God does not cry, my beloved. The Lord Jesus got hungry. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights and then he was hungry. Who was hungry? The human side. Divinity never eats. Divinity never hungers. The Lord Jesus was thirsty. That's the human side. The Lord Jesus slept. That's the human side. But then the divine side of Christ, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. He opened the eyes of the blind. He, he cast out demons of people. Here is showing Christ is perfect God and perfect man. Now, when the Lord is saying, my father is greater than I, it is the human side of Christ talking, not the divine. Because humanity is lesser than the divine. The divine created the human side. You see, and this is where Christianity is so perfectly put together. We never say this man became God. As some claim and attack the Christian faith. They say, how can you say this man became God? That's a blasphemy. Exactly. Christianity never claims this man became God. Christianity claims God became man. And if you are going to say that God cannot be a human, then you have limited God. Don't ever call him almighty. You have stripped him of his rank. He is no longer God. If God cannot do anything and everything, then he's not God. Can God be a human? Yes. Can a human be God? No. So that's why the human side of Christ says, my father is greater than I. Not the son of God, the son of man is talking here. So we need to understand how the Holy Bible operates. And let me prove to you, on the other hand, as the son of God who is God, Look at this. In John 10, John chapter 10, verses 29 to 30. John chapter 10, verses 29 to 30. This is the Lord. Now this is the Son of God talking. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. Is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Now look, verse 30. I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. Have you noticed something? Not only he is saying, I am one with God, with God the Father, he puts himself before the Father. He didn't say, my Father and I are one. He says, I and the Father are one. Wow. Who can dare to put themselves before God unless they are God? See? So now, in John 10, the Son of God is talking. And in John... 14, 1428, it is the Son of Man talking. Because Christ is perfect God and perfect man. I think we need to go back to um, primary school level and we start teaching these um, catechism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, she, and he follows with another question. Uh, it's all coming along. Or she argues also this woman in John chapter 1 verse 14. 
And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, where she says afterwards that this is a proof that Jesus is not God, but only the word of God. So the word became flesh. She takes that and basing it on this, trying to prove that Jesus Christ is not God. He is only the Word. He is not God. Has she read the Gospel of St. John properly? Well, I'll take you to John 1.1. 1, 1. In fact, we will read John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So where are you getting this from, my dear? The Word became flesh, and therefore He is not God. He is just the Word. Well, the Word is God, according to John 1.1. 1, 1. And let's read further into verses 2 and 3. What is this? Who is this Word? Look at it. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. So without the Word, who is the Word? The Logos, the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to His holy name. The Son of God is the Word. This Son of God is God Himself because the Word is God. So this God, without Him, nothing was made from what was made. Meaning, without Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God couldn't have created anything. Because he's God. If God the Father was greater than the Son, then God the Father would have created everything. But John 1 verse 3 says, without the, the Logos, without the Word, nothing could have been made from what was made. So without the Son, there is no creation. And you're telling me God is only the Father? And Jesus is not God? Are you kidding yourself? My dear, my advice to you is if you're not a doctor, do not claim to be one because you'll be giving the wrong medication and instead of healing people, you will make them more sick. You will destroy them. So go and learn before you talk. Go and learn before you talk. And if you wish to learn with a, with a clear conscience, with an open heart, we are more than happy to give you what the Lord has given us. We're more than happy. Freely you have received, freely you shall give. And her last argument comes from Colossians 3.1. Wow, amazing. What is Colossians 3.1? This is what Colossians 3.1 says. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Where she also says, if they are equal, why is Jesus at the right hand of God? So if they're equal, shouldn't they be all in one place? Why is he at the right? So it looks like the Father is greater and the Son is like on the right of the Father. No, no, we, we need to learn a lot before you talk. <laughs> That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. I just hope uh, this person hasn't uh, destroyed a lot of lives and taken them astray from the true teachings of the apostolic church. Yeah? Apostolic, yes? Yes, yes. Go back to, the, to your foundation. Apostolic teaching. So she's saying, well, if they're equal, why then is Jesus at the right hand of God? My, my dear friend, who went up? Who went up and sat at the right hand of the Father? Was it the Son of God or the Son of Man? Which body went up and sat at the right hand of the Father? Wasn't that the body, the glorified body, which, was ris which, which rose from the dead on the third day as it is written? That glorified body went up and sat at the right hand of the Father.
the human. Why? Why the human? Let's read in Genesis 1.26. In Genesis 1.26, this is God speaking. And when we, when we invoke the name or the word God, we mean Father, Son, Holy Spirit at the same time. Yes? So in Genesis 1.26, then God said, let us, who is us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So God is saying in Genesis 1.26, let us go down and make man according to our image and our image according in, uh, to our likeness. Now Genesis 3, 4 to 5, look at the serpent, Satan. Look what Satan is saying to our mother Eve in Genesis 3, 4 to 5. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, of that tree, for the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis 1.26 Let us go down and make man in our image according to our likeness, like God. So who wanted this man, Adam, to be like God? God himself. Satan came in a sneaky way and said to our mother Eve, did God really say don't eat from that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Come on, trust me. God is selfish. He doesn't want you to eat from it because when you eat from it, you will be like God. But God made the promise from the very beginning. I will create you according to our likeness. I'll make you like me. But look at this sneaky devil. Ach, 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 minnuch. Satan is very sneaky. I just want to say one thing to my beloved sons and daughters, especially the young ones. Satan comes in two ways to attack any one of us. Put the volume down a bit, Rami. Satan will come and attack us in two ways. One in a nice way, another one in a nasty way. Satan is depicted in the Holy Bible in two ways and resembled by two kind of creatures. One snake, serpent, the other one a lion. Now a snake is an attack of the enemy in a nice way. Why? Because the snake comes very hush hush. You don't hear it until you either step on it or you get very close where it makes that special noise. But it comes in a very sneaky way. Very quiet, very gentle, very soft, full of poison however. So what is the nice sneaky attack of Satan? He'll come to any one of us and say, who told you going to Star City Casino is wrong? Doesn't everybody go? What are you, and are you the odd one? Are you the black sheep of the family? Listen, brother, you only live once and you think this is your thoughts. It's not, it's the enemy. So you talk as if you're talking to yourself. And then you start saying to yourself, well, yeah, that's right. That's right, bro. There is nothing wrong. I work very hard. I need to enjoy life. Nothing wrong with it. All my friends go clubbing. All my friends drink. All my friends have fun. So what's wrong with it? Since everybody's doing it, what are they all wrong? And I'm right. And I only live once. And I'm still young. I don't want to go to church now. It's too early. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm a monk or I'm a nun. I'll have fun, Lord Jesus. I'll give you a time out like in basketball. I'll give you that time out. I'll come when I'm a pensioner. When I don't have the strength to go clubs and to go pubs and to go whatever. I won't have that strength anymore. I'll come to church and I'll be a good boy and a good girl. And you're a merciful God. I'll come and say, please forgive me, Lord. And you will. 
So what's the difference of kill two birds with one stone? I had fun while I was young and I'm having fun while I'm old. What guarantees do you have? None. What guarantees do we have? None. The only guarantee is when Christ is your King and your Lord. So when you go out and having fun, that is a sneaky way. You know, if you reject that, so your friends keep on calling you, come on, brother, let's go. What do you mean you don't want to go out? Come on, mate, it's time. We have fun. We're not doing anything. We're just going with the flow. You keep on rejecting. You keep on rejecting. You will see Satan coming to you as a lion. Now, when the lion comes, the lion doesn't come in a soft, gentle, Habib Albi. He doesn't come and say, it's going to say, Rawr. so what, do we, what will he do when you reject the easy, soft way? He will raise people to go against you and give you hell like a lion. All of a sudden, your family has gone against you. All of a sudden, your friends have den denied you. All of a sudden, the closest person to you is your worst enemy now. Wow. That's Satan. So he came to our mother Eve as a snake. Easy, nice, gentle way. Did really God say, you're, gonna die? No, you're not going to die? Come on, eat. You're going to be like God when you eat from it. Adam forgot that God already made this promise. That I will make you, Adam, like me. Satan used the same approach in a deceptive, sneaky, poisonous way. Satan said to Adam, you can be like God your way. But God said, I'll make you like me my way. So when Adam listened to Satan through Eve, what did Adam end up being? A slave to Satan. He lost the position and the rank of the son of God and became a slave. This is why Jesus went up and sat at the right hand of the father, my dear friend. Because Jesus Christ is the son of God. Adam was created to be the son of God. Read the genealogy of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 3. And Adam was the son of God. So Adam was created to be his son. When Adam broke God's word, he fell off that position and lost the sonship and ended up being a slave to sin, a slave to death, a slave to Satan. Who needed to come to bring the son Adam back to the sonship, the son of God, the only begotten of the father? That's why he came down. That's why the Son of God went into the womb of the virgin of all virgins. The everlasting virgin. And I want every ear to open up and hear this. She is always the virgin of all virgins. How dare you say otherwise? And anyone talk about my mom, you will see a different marmari. You can tell me off as, much, as long as you want. I'll bless you. I deserve it. You talk about my mom, I'll break you. I'll break you. If Jesus doesn't do it, I'll do it. I have my own ways. But I won't break you to be lost. I'll break you to come back to the truth. To the truth. Listen, the Holy Mother is my sweetheart, it's my mom. And my mom, no one can tell me Mary is not with me. No one. No one. No one can tell me that when the Holy Mother came personally to deliver this piece of wreck. No one. Just because you have not seen her. That doesn't mean she is not 
because your level hasn't got to that level for you to see who Mary is. What do we know about the spiritual life? Have you sat for a moment and thought for a moment between you and yourself and said, spiritual life is endless, is limitless. How come you are limiting God and the family of God just because you do not know it, you did not see it, just because you didn't see it, just because you didn't encounter it, you say it doesn't exist. You haven't reached that high level for you to realize. You're still a baby in spirituality. You're still drinking milk. Like St. Paul says, I still feed you milk and bread. I haven't given you meat because you haven't got teeth yet. You are in your infancy stage in your spiritual stature. Can that be? Yes. But when you grow higher and higher in spirituality, no, <laughs> I guarantee you, <laughs> the Holy Mother will come and greet you. And a lot of saints will come and greet you. And the Lord himself will come and greet you. I guarantee you. <clears throat> the Son of God came down in the womb of the Holy Mother, took on the human nature, and became man like us. This man in the Holy Bible, he is referred to as the last Adam. Let me read to you 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 58. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, the last Adam meaning Jesus Christ. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual, meaning Adam the former came, then the latter. The, the first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, and was the man, um, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus Christ. Now this I say, brethren, this is St. Paul, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I'll tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of, a, of, an, uh, of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. Uh, incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory or death where is your sting or Hades where is your victory the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And St. Paul, man, uh, one day we're going to talk about the epistles of St. Paul. It's stunning, stunning, stunning. Amazing, amazing. So that's why the Son of God came, because he wanted to bring Adam, who was created to be the Son of God, into the position again. So the Son of God came down, dwelt in the womb of the Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, took on human nature, became man, and to bring the former Adam to the position once again as the Son of God. When he did this, what did Jesus Christ do? He had to rise from the dead. Why? Because he had to ascend to heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father. Now what is the right hand? Equality. Equal. Genesis 1.26 Let us go down and make man in our image according to our likeness. Like me. 
like God. What is like God? Equal. So the Son of Man, the glorified body, was taken up and put at the right hand of the Father. The right hand is equal to God. This was the promise which God gave to Adam to eat before even creating Adam. I'm going to make you like me. When Adam wanted to be like God his way, he failed and became a slave. The Son of God came to make Adam once again like God, the Son. Equal to God. But this time God's way, not our way. God's way. So many times we want to do things our way. Where do we end up? In a lot of trouble. Don't we? Whenever we take shortcuts, we cause a lot of heart headaches and heartaches. The children don't listen to parents. They cop it. My son, the father or the mother comes to the son or the daughter. They say, don't mix with those people that you call friends. We see they are not good for you. Oh, please, mom and dad, you're old fashioned. Can you go back to some village in Lebanon or in Syria or in Iraq and leave me alone? This is Australia. And I know what I'm doing. Mom, leave me alone. Get off my case. Dad, you're too stubborn. You're too Middle Eastern. So they continue walking with those so-called friends. They end up in a lot of trouble, drugs, alcohol, gambling, women, boys, girls, prison, being shot. When we don't listen to our parents, we get into trouble. When we don't listen to our heavenly father, definitely we die. So that's why Jesus took that glorified body and put, made it equal to God. Whoever received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we become the Son of God, equal to God, like God. In our image, according to our likeness, like God. That's why he went up. What has this got to do that Jesus is not God just because he's at the right hand? I don't know. I don't know where you get these ideas from. We need to read the Holy Bible properly. Look at this Hebrew 1.3. The epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews 1.3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. St. Paul is talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God. What did Jesus Christ um, do when he had by himself purged, purged, cleansed, cleansed our sins by himself, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Question to everyone who claims to be a Christian, who forgives sins? God by himself jesus christ purged our sins so what does that make jesus christ god because since god is the only one who can forgive and cleanse sins then jesus did it by himself he is god revealed in the flesh i haven't even touched the surface if i give this person verses from the holy bible proving jesus christ is god she will never hear the end of it. I don't want to keep you here. That's why I'm rushing through it, even though I'm very tempted, very tempted to keep you as long as I can. Are you happy? Are you tired? You sure? Do you want me to stop or continue? Be honest. Let's vote. Continue. Put your hand up. Okay. Those who did not put their hand up, tough luck. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my goodness.